Hi, everybody. Alright, so we fresh off the victory of getting the comm shelf all done. Uh, so now just picking up the little bits and pieces that we need to get done before uh, closing off the top here. Uh, here you can see I've gone, uh, naturally I lost the footage, the terminal block. Put a terminal block here in place. You can see a little red one. It, it seemed a shame because we had a terminal block for the main bus. Uh, just as a way to distribute to different rows of uh, breakers. And I thought we needed to have one for the essential bus as well. So this is the one I was talking about. Uh, this will then branch off to a few of the small essential things, warning lights, etc., which I'm sure in the future will expand. Now, I know you're looking at it thinking, well, I think it's sitting. Or wait, isn't the rod for the canopy sort of sitting on it don't worry I mean it, it is sitting on it at the moment but its default position misses it by about 15 degrees even in its extended position so we're happy with that all right so I'm currently testing the system you can see the LED lights are sort of glowing downwards now that we've established all the wires uh, the only thing that we really have left at this point because we're pretty happy uh, it's just Take a bunch of zip ties, tie all the wires up as tight as possible, and I think that's it. Oh, okay, so we are replacing this. So we, a couple of videos back, you saw me working on getting the fuel uh, fuel valve cover to, to fit, which is great. However, I decided, you know what, this is one of those places, because it's kind of weak, it's a, it's a little thin. And you can basically, if you push with your thumb right behind the fuel valve, you can bend the metal, right? And I said, you know what? That's a high traffic area. People's feet are going to wind up on that. People are going to step on it. I need to make it a little stronger. So taking a, one of my pieces of uh, 1 8 inch thick carbon fiber that I made when uh, while we were sort of, you know, working on some carbon stuff and replacing it with that. And I am happy to announce that it is very stiff. Plus, it was a heck of a lot easier cutting the hole. So I can use a diamond grinder and cut a hole through that carbon fiber, like in a drill press, no problem. Heck of a lot more responsive to it than trying to drill a hole through metal. You can see I'm being responsible and wearing a mask. Uh, yeah, again, so these aren't vital pieces for the plane to be done. This is me stalling. All right, this is a very important thing. This is why you're watching me stall. Uh, because you're thinking, hmm, well, why aren't you, you know, covering up the top of the fuselage? Because I'm stalling. Because it scares me. All right. And in the realm of that, once I have this thing finished, we are going to work on one other thing. If I can be bothered to get off my phone long enough. All right, and here it is. So this, I got a pair of Bowden push-pull cables, and what we're working on is the cabin heat. So each side has a push-pull cable, which activates uh, the hinge spring down by your feet. Here you're going to get a little spark show. And these Bowden cables are cool. So basically you pull out the cable about three inches, and then you cut through the whole thing. And that will not only cut the sheath, but it will cut the cable so that you can push it back in the length that you pulled it back out. Uh, there's a couple of uh, special connectors you use because it is a wire. I had to order those from Vans, we got those. And so now it's time to fit it in. As you can see with the front cover off, so much easier. Of course then I realized I had to have my final panel in place for it to actually be installed so it got <laughs> it got next. Anyway, next video, more stuff. Thank you for joining me. See you soon.